Hi there everyone, Bruno Luce here for JLB Productions. Thanks for joining us for this video in which I'm going to show you how to use the PreSonus ACP88. This unit is an 8 channel combined compressor and gate. It's an extremely useful unit and there are still many many of these in use all over the world even though increasingly we find ourselves going to digital mixers which have built-in dynamics on each channel. This is a fully analog unit, which has been one of the best sellers for PreSonus, and we're very fortunate that we have one. So follow along in this video, and I'll show you how to work it. Okay, everyone, this is the front of the PreSonus ACP88, and as you can see, it is located immediately above the mixer and below the Lexicon Effects unit. Now the first thing that we need to realize is that this unit, as the name suggests, is divided into eight individual channels, each of which has eight knobs, hence the name 88. Each of the channels is clearly marked. As you can see here, there are these big thick lines, vertical white lines that divide the channels from one another. Each channel, as you can see, is identical, and each of them is divided into two sections. Uh, if I just center the camera on this one so we can take a closer look. So there are four blue knobs which together comprise the compressor section. There are three white knobs which together comprise the gate section and there is a black gain knob which generally is left at 12 o'clock. I'm going to explain the compressor section and then I will explain the gate section. Now evidently before you can use the ACP88 you need to know how to connect it to the mixer. As you will no doubt have noticed down here there are a number of quarter inch jacks each of which has a number. The number corresponds to the channel on the ACP88. So for example this is channel 3, this is channel 2 and this one over here is channel 1. So if, for example, I wanted to connect this channel, channel 3, to channel 7 of the mixer, I would plug it in here. Now this is a view from the top of the mixer with a little bit better lighting showing you that you must connect the PreSonus to the insert jacks. As you can see here, each channel has the mic connector and then a line input a direct output and nearest the gain knob there is the insert jack socket so that is where you connect these. If you connect them to the line input you will suddenly find that the channel doesn't work. Uh, if you connect them to the direct output the processor will not be patched into the channel in the correct way so make sure you attach them to the insert point. Now to demonstrate the ACP88 what I've done is I've unplugged channel 1 from the house snake and I've plugged in this green cable which is connected to a normal SM58 that we use for talkback and I'm going to patch channel 3 of the compressor gate into this first channel of the mixer. So as you can see there I've just patched channel 3 in uh, please note that you can patch the channels in any way you choose. There's no need to go sequentially. You know, you could patch channel uh, 1 of the compressor into channel 20 of the mixer if you wish. It's completely up to you. I'm using channel 3 in this case because it just makes it a bit easier to fill. Okay, let's begin this demonstration. Now, the audio that you are hearing is coming from that SM58 which is plugged directly into channel 1. The other thing that I have done is I have stuck a couple of strips of white tape on the front of the unit so that you can clearly see the particular channel that I'm working on otherwise all the knobs get a little bit confusing. The microphone channel that we are working on the EQ is set flat apart from a slight bass cut and low mid cut to keep the boominess out of my voice. The fader is set at Unity and the mixer's main faders are also set at Unity. 
I'm holding the mic about an inch from my mouth, so this approximates somebody who is using the microphone for a spoken vocal. Now let's begin with the compressor section, which is the four blue knobs on the left-hand side. The concept of a compressor is that once the signal increases a certain level, the compressor will begin to reduce the signal. Now we do this manually all the time. If a singer gets too loud, you reduce the level on their channel. A compressor does this automatically, but you need to tell it when to reduce the level and by how much to reduce the level. Now, the topmost blue knob, as you can see there, is called the threshold. Now, the threshold controls when the compressor kicks in. If the signal is below the threshold that you set, the compressor will not kick in. Once the threshold is exceeded, the compressor will begin to reduce the signal in accordance to the ratio control. Now, the ratio control is the knob below this. And as you can see there, it goes from 1 is to 1, which is effectively no compression, all the way through to infinity is to 1, which is limiting, also known as a brick wall. If it is set to infinity to 1, it will not allow the signal to exceed the threshold. As you can see, the threshold is set at zero. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the threshold anti-clockwise. As the threshold is reached, you will see these LEDs here begin to light up. Now, these LEDs show you how much the unit is compressing. Check one, two, three, four. Check, check. One, two. Now, as you can see there, we are just exceeding the threshold. Now, when the threshold is exceeded, a couple of things happen. First of all, the light at the top changes from green to red. Red means that the compressor is kicking in. The other thing that happens, of course, is that the lights start to light up to show you how much the signal is being reduced. So, as you can hear, because it is set to infinity to one, my voice simply won't go any louder, right? Check one, two, 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 two. I can shout all I want and my voice is not going to get any louder. Now, this is very, very drastic compression, but it's there if you need it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the ratio control and I'll let you hear how that sounds. So I'm going to go from infinity to 1 to 4 is to 1. This is what you would use for a typical speech application. So you would have the compressor just sort of tickling the threshold as they call it. And the idea being that if the speaker suddenly goes really loud, the compressor will catch that before feedback occurs or even worse, you damage your equipment. Same thing if the person drops their microphone, a compressor can save the day. Now, this is still quite severe and it's usually not the best sort of way to set it for singers because with singers, you want something that's a bit more gradual. So... I'm going to now change it to 2 is to 1. Now with the setting at 2 is to 1, you can hear that the compressor is more gentle and it allows more in the way of dynamic range. So this is more suitable for a singing application because it won't jump on the loud parts and, and rob the singer of their ability to control the dynamics themselves. Below that ladder of LEDs, you can see there's two buttons here. Now, the top button is what's called soft. What this does is it allows the compressor to roll gently into the compression, meaning that the compressor starts to kick in just a little bit before the threshold that you have set. And as a result, it doesn't sound so drastic. Some people would say that with the soft button disengaged, the sound is a bit choppier because the compressor cuts in in a much more obvious way. Personally, 
the only time I disengage it is for percussive sounds such as drums, as well as certain other types of, uh, for example, slap bass playing, that kind of thing. Now, below the ratio knob, you can see there's two knobs here. The top is the attack knob, which tells you how fast the compressor kicks in. And the bottom is the release knob. Now, these two knobs, generally speaking, I will simply leave the auto button. You can see this auto button engaged. Now, what that means is that the, the unit itself makes these choices for me. You can set these yourself. If you want to, you disengage the auto button and you set the levels yourself. But to be honest with you, I think that this machine does quite a good job of setting them. So I personally leave the auto engaged all the time. Some of the more experienced engineers, especially for signals that don't change a lot like kick drum, will set these themselves. Uh, I personally think the machine does a better job. So that's the compressor section. Now you've heard it on my voice. Let's hear it on some real world sound sources. Now the first real world sound that we're going to listen to is a kick drum. Now compressors are great on drums because they help to even out the dynamics and they also help you to, to get a punchier sound. This is especially true on kick drums that are not too well tuned as well as those where the heads are a little bit old. Now what I've done is I have recorded our church kick drum and as you can see here, I've plugged it. I've plugged my recorder into mixer channel three. That's the red plug, and in front of that, I've patched in the same compressor channel that we've been looking at. Obviously, my uh, vocal mic is still active, and that's going through the original channel. The compressor threshold is set to zero. The ratio is set to four is to one. I switch the soft button out because we're working with drums and here comes the kick drum. I'm just looping it. Okay, fader is now at unity and the gain is also at, uh, I've set the gain using the gain setting procedure to be at zero dB. Now if you listen to the sound of the kick drum, this is the sound with no compression and no gating at all. You can hear a couple of things. The first thing is that you can hear it sounds a little bit loose. The other thing, of course, is that there's quite a bit of ring and uh, background noise. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the threshold such that I have between 3 and 6 decibels of compression each time. Okay, there we are. So that gives me between 3 and 6 decibels. Now I can raise the level of the input fader. Now can you hear the sound of the drum change? bit more compression, bit more input level. Now this is beginning to sound a little bit more like a commercial kick drum. If I press the bypass button we can compare the sounds. So this is compressor out, no compressor, compressor, no compressor, compressor. Okay. Now I'm going to explain the gate section which is the three white knobs on the right side of the channel. A gate is like an automatic mute. It will turn the channel off when it is not in use, so if it's a microphone, it will mute the microphone when no one is speaking or singing into it. If it's a direct or DI input, a similar thing will happen when the instrument's being played, the channel will be on, and when the instrument is not, it will be off. Gates are a wonderful help because it means it's, it's essentially like having somebody watching just that channel 
and turning it off when the mic's not in use and turning it on the millisecond that the channel actually comes into use. Once again, it has a threshold control, which is the top knob. The threshold, think of it as a deafness control. The more clockwise you turn it, the more deaf the gate gets. So the louder the input has to be before the gate will open. Now, at the moment, it is set fully counterclockwise, which means that the gate remains open at all times. I'm just going to set a, a little bit of compression on this microphone. Check, check, one, two. There we go just to even my voice out a bit. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the knob clockwise until the gate closes and excludes the background noise, and you'll hear that quite clearly. Okay, now, as you can see, the moment that I talk, the gate opens, and my voice comes through. When I'm not speaking, the gate closes and you have silence. Now, below the threshold knob, there are two more knobs. Now, this here, this is the attack knob. The attack knob controls how quickly the gate opens. So, if I set it to very, very quick, the gate opens straight away. If I set a slower attack time, the gate opens in a more relaxed way. Typically, we leave it set around, um, this reads in milliseconds, so we, we leave it to about one millisecond uh, for general purposes. The control below that is the release control, which controls how quickly the gate closes. So if your release is set too, um, too fast, it will actually chop off the ends of, of people's words. And uh, if so, it's better to set it to about a second. This one reads in seconds. This reads in a milliseconds. There's a button here which says minus 60 dB. Now, what this does is it controls how tightly the gate shuts. If this knob is in, when the light is red, you have a full 60 dB of attenuation, which means that that channel is effectively off. If the knob is out, you have only 15 dB of attenuation which means that you can still hear some background noise coming through. Can you hear that? So the idea is that if you don't want the gated and ungated signals to be too much of a difference, you disengage this. This is useful when you are recording because when you're recording, you don't want dead silence in between somebody's um, words, especially in St. George's where we have a lot of background noise. So it's best to leave it in this setting. On the other hand, if you're gating drums, as we'll see, it's best to leave it pushed in because then the channel does not uh, let anything through when it is not in use. Okay, now let's hear how the same kick drum sounds when it comes to the gating section. As you can see here, the setup is the same as before. It's the same recorded kick drum signal and the compression ratio once again is giving me between 3 and 6 dB on each hit. Let's bring the sound in. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the gate control, right, the threshold such that it opens when the Beta hits the head and it closes at all other times. Okay, can you hear that? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the attack and release times to give me a tighter sound. Right now the gate's closing a little bit too slowly. There we are. Now, you should detect quite a substantial difference between that and the uncompressed sound. No gate or compressor. Gate and compressor. Turning it up a little bit. There we go. And that's how you get your tight kick drum sound.
Okay, now let's hear the application of this on snare drum. Once again, I have recorded our church snare drum, and I'm looping it. It sounds like this. Right. Now, again, with no gating and no compression, you can hear that the drum sounds sort of loose, and there's quite a bit of garbage in the signal. So let's begin with adding some compression. There we go. And we'll turn up the level to just keep the same overall level. Okay. And now we want to add some gating to lose the over ring. So. Okay. Now, obviously with snare drum, you can choose to have allow more of the tail through, longer release. There you are. Or if you want a really, really tight snare drum, you, you have it shut almost immediately. And you can hear that there are a number of special effects that you can achieve with this. Like that sounds almost sci-fi. So that's snare drum with gating and compression. Now so far we've listened to the gate and the compressor with just the kick drum signal. In other words, I'm not playing the rest of the kit. One of the things that gates are extremely valuable for is helping you to clean up the mix. In other words, they will help prevent the kick drum mic from hearing things other than the kick drum. Now what I'm going to do is I'm, I have recorded a passage here where I am playing the whole drum kit and as I bring the signal up you can hear very clearly that the kick drum mic is also picking up the snare drum. Here it comes. Okay. Now at the moment I have the compressor set as before but no gating. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the gate to try and lose the snare drum. Right now, at this point, the gate is opening on both the kick and the snare drum. So we've lost the background noise, but we haven't quite lost the snare drum yet. So we'll keep going. Okay. Can you hear that? It's almost as though magically the snare drum has disappeared. Bypass the compressor. Okay, there you have a whole bunch of garbage. There, you got just clean, tight kick drum. And that's what you want. And finally, what we're going to demonstrate, the snare drum in context. Once again, I'm playing the entire drum kit. Here's the snare drum mic. Now you can hear with the snare drum mic, the major challenge is to try and lose the hi-hat because the hi-hat is right next to the snare drum and it's really, really loud. Once again, we'll adjust the compressor here. Okay. Now let's adjust the gate. First of all, we'll adjust it so that we're losing the background noise. Now this is more difficult than with the kick drum because the the hi-hats play an almost continuous pattern, so you've got to go tighter on the gate. As you can hear, even with the gate cranks really tightly shut, there's still a tiny amount of hi-hat. So, you know, sometimes one must compromise. That's about the closest we're going to get. Again, with a longer release time, you can still hear the hi-hat bleeding through, but if you shorten your release time too much, the snare begins to sound unnatural. There we go. 
So fiddle around, use your ears, and eventually you get a good sound. Now just to finish this video off, I thought I'd give you some sample settings which you can use in the real world. Uh, beginning with the compressor section, for spoken voice applications I recommend 4 is to 1 or 3 is to 1 and set the threshold control such that when the person is speaking you see a little bit of compression, like that or like so. The idea behind this is that when you have a spoken word application, you want the sound to be as even as possible. And obviously, you are reducing the person's dynamic level, but this is actually a good idea when it is spoken word because you are helping them to be more clearly understood. When it comes to singers, I would begin at two is to one and with singers, you only want to compress the loudest parts, right? So essentially, it's there um, just as a sort of safety mechanism to you know, prevent them getting uh, too loud. So you only want compression on the loudest parts. And again, the compression is a little bit more gentle with it set at two is to one. For drums, you want the soft button out and you usually begin at two is to one, uh, I'm sorry, you begin at four is to one, and you will set it such that there's between uh, three and six dB of compression on each hit. Again, uh, use your ears, your mileage will vary, preferences are important, but this is just a good starting point. Once again, if you want to set your own attack and release, you can uh, take the auto button off and adjust these yourself. When it comes to the gate, the way that you set the gate is that you always set it with the mic on and no one speaking into it. Then you adjust the uh, threshold control such that it closes and excludes the background noise. Okay? And then if you find that it's still letting too much sound through, you would make it tighter. If it's cutting the person off, you would make it looser. These two knobs, attack one millisecond, release one second. Good way to start. If you're fighting feedback, reduce the release so that the gate closes more quickly. And again, if recording, keep 60 dB off. For drums, make sure the 60 dB is pushed in. Finally, the gain knob. It's best to leave it at zero or 12 o'clock. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video on the PreSonus ACP88. I hope that the information was useful to you. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments field below or contact me via email or via my YouTube channel and I'll be happy to answer them. Until we meet again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in church.